Welcome to Introduction to Machine Learning. I'm Ludwig Botmann and in this video I will tell you about the very basics of supervised machine learning. You should understand the fundamental goal of supervised machine learning and you should know the very concepts which are data, task, model, parameter, learner, loss function and finally empirical risk minimization. Let's start out with the definition of machine learning as phrased by Tom Mitchell in the 1990s, which is a computer program is said to learn from experience E with respect to some task T and some performance measure P if its performance on task T as measured by performance measure P improves with experience E. So we could also say we want to learn from experience. What we do in this lecture is mostly about supervised learning. There are also other subfields of machine learning like unsupervised learning or reinforcement learning, which we will not really speak about in this lecture. Okay, let's start with an example of what machine learning tries to do. So we start with some training data. These labeled <clears throat> training data in this case are images of cats and dogs and we want to learn a model which tells us for a new image if the thing that we see on that image is a cat or a dog. So machine learning tries to find a model usually we say y is f of x where x is the input or feature and y is the output or target and in this case x is just an image and y is the class is it a cat or is it a dog so during training we have labeled data which means we know the true target and if we have that model we can make use of this during prediction where we do not know the true target so we don't know if it's a cat or a dog we only have the image and with this model we try to predict the correct class. <clears throat> the data in supervised learning can be divided in target and features. Target, usually denoted by Y, is the thing that we want to predict. So the output or the goal of prediction or the response variable, usually that's just one column. We can have multi-class but for now we'll just say this is just one column of our data set and all the other columns of the data set are the features. Here in this case the features are numerical features so that's tabular data. On the first slide the features would just be the red, green and blue channels of all the pixels of an image. <clears throat> and what we try to learn is a functional relationship between y and x. So we want to learn this function f which is in the middle between the features and the target. We denote the data set usually by d <clears throat> and x1 is the first feature vector and y1 is the first target and we have in total n observations in this data set. <clears throat> Next concept is a task. Supervised tasks are labeled data situations where we want to learn exactly this functional relationship between features and target and we distinguish between two main tasks that are regression and classification. And the only thing that we need for this distinction is to know the scale of the target variable y. So if y is numeric so from some, for example, some real number from the real numbers. And an example could be to predict days a patient has to stay in the hospital. Then we are on the regression side. And if Y comes from a finite set of categories, C1 to CG, then we are at the classification. For example, we perhaps want to predict one of two risk categories for life insurance customer. So on the left hand side we have one feature X and one target Y, both are numerical and the black dots are data points and we 
want to learn this functional relationship here. And on the right hand side, the target Y is denoted by the color and form of the dots here. So we have circles and triangles and we have two numerical features and we want to learn the decision boundary between the two classes, 0 and 1 in this case. <clears throat> Next concept is that of a model. A model F maps from feature space to r to the power of g. In usual regression, g will just be 1. And in multi-class classification, g is the number of classes. <clears throat> the model F is exactly the connection between features and target. So we will predict y as f of x. We consider only a restricted set of these functions and gather all these functions in a thing called hypothesis space, H. And this hypothesis space is a set of all functions that we allow to be there. So we say, for example, we only look at linear functions. So the model that we will learn will definitely be a linear model because that was a design choice that we made before. Later we try to find the best of these linear functions. But being a linear function would be, in this example, a design choice. We can also parameterize these functions. <clears throat> So, for example, in the case of a linear model, we can say y is theta 0 plus theta 1 times x1, where theta 0 is just the intercept and theta 1 is the slope. And that means then that finding the optimal model, f, is the same as finding the optimal set of parameters, theta. <clears throat> The algorithm that helps us finding the best member of the hypothesis space or the best model for our data situation is called learner or also inducer or learning algorithm. It learns or tries to learn automatically the relation between features and target for a given set of training data. So we feed into the learner or inducer, that's why it's an I here, the data set <clears throat> and some control parameters lambda, which we will see later, which are also called hyperparameters. And the output of the learner is one member of the hypothesis space H, which hopefully fits the training data best. So <clears throat> if we go to the regression example here, all those light, smaller, thinner blue lines are possible functions. <clears throat> you could also have functions like these, but they are obviously very bad for the data points. And all these functions are members of the hypothesis space and the learner tries to pick the best functions of all these, which is the thicker blue line on the left side. And for the classification set, the number or, or the <clears throat> different possible functions are the decision boundaries or they correspond to decision boundaries. That's a little bit more correct here. But we could also have like, these decision boundaries, which don't really differentiate very well between the 0 and the 1 class, of course. And again, the learner tries to find the best model, so the best function f, which in this case leads to a linear decision boundary because the hypothesis space was restricted to linear classif classifiers. And what a linear classifier is, you will see later. <clears throat> so perhaps with this small figure here, we start with a training set where we have features and target. So we have labeled data and the learner delivers us the model F that we can use later for predicting Y given new features. <clears throat> Now one question would be, how does the learner pick the best element of the hypothesis space, of course. And for this, the concepts of loss and risk are very helpful. The loss measures point is a pointwise measure and tries to quantify how far away the prediction f is from the true target y. 
One example could be the L2 loss, which just takes the difference of the true target and the predicted target and squares this difference. <clears throat> so in the example below, we have this blue square here. So it's not a square in this figure, but if you look at the axis, they are on different scale. So if you would rescale those, it's actually a square. So this is the loss for this observation here. And we can, of course, compute this loss for all the observations. So for all black dots here. And if we sum all those losses up, then we get the empirical risk. So the empirical risk is just the sum of the pointwise losses. So loss is something that measures for one observation how good the model is. And risk measures the same thing for the entire model. <coughs> We had before the parameterization of the model F, so we could also write here R M of theta. If we have a parameterized model, uh, we could also just be looking for the best parameters theta. <coughs> now the only thing left is that we have to minimize this empirical risk. So empirical risk is here we try to find the argmin of this thing. So we search over all the parameters in the parameter space and try to find that parameter that leads to the smallest empirical risk. And that's the result theta hat, which defines the final model. There are a lot of different options how to optimize this empirical risk exactly. And we will cover some of those in later chapters. But for now, it's only important to know that we are looking for this empirical risk minimizer. And if you look at this figure here, we have the slope and the intercept of this linear model. So theta 0 and theta 1. And on the third axis, the risk. <clears throat> High risk is bad. We want to have a low risk. So in this color spectrum here, what we try to find is exactly this model here or this combination of slope and intercept because that's the global minimum of the risk surface, so the model with the lowest empirical risk and, well, the result of our learning algorithm.